Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and this is episode 39. It is Thursday, September 29th, 2016 and I wanted to thank you so much for being here and for joining me. I live just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia with my family and this is a spinning podcast and it is sort of everything related to spinning and hand spun yarn. So thank you so much for returning if you are a returning viewer and if you are a first time watcher, thank you so much for checking out the show. I have a couple of announcements to make and I want to make them right away at the beginning of the show because um, I don't want you to miss out. October 1st, which is two days from now if you're watching the show on Thursday evening, the Patreon uh, levels will open. If you would like to join in on Fiber Club workshops or a combo of those two things, please check out patreon.com slash wellfordpearls. All of the information for those different levels is on the right hand side as you scroll down the sidebar. Fiber Club will have very limited spots available. Um, we are very, very close to our next milestone and once we hit our next milestone, um, we will be not only um, will the show lengthen, uh, it will be a longer show going forward once we hit our next milestone. It will also be available on iTunes. So if we can hit our next milestone, fingers crossed, um, the show will be available on iTunes as of whenever that happens. So thank you in advance for everybody's support and ongoing um, patronage and also just the kind words that I've received throughout the week and uh, the reaching out from a few people in particular I just want to say a very warm thank you you guys know who you are your words mean a lot um, I think that's it so patreon levels fiber club will open in the morning October 1st I will post on Instagram when everything opens but I'm aiming to have everything open by about seven o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So if you want to be a part of Fiber Club, please uh, make a note. 7 a.m. Saturday morning, October 1st. Okay, um, we also have Spinzilla starting on Sunday. This is a event put on by TNNA. If you do not know what Spinzilla is and you're a relatively new spinner, please go to tnna.org um, and have a look there because for me to sit here and explain it all is, <laughs> we'd be here for a very long time. Um, but Spinzilla is a monster week. It is all about spinning. Um, I am team captain for Team Sweet Georgia, which is a Vancouver-based indie dyeing yarn business. Um, my friend Felicia owns that. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Our team is full. Everybody's revving to go. Um, if you are participating in Spinzilla, please get over into our Ravelry group if you're spinning Rogue. There is a discussion thread for people who are kind of on their own and looking for some support throughout the week. It is spin like the wind for seven days and see how much yardage you can you can do. Plying does count. So um, to anybody who's participating, good luck, and I'll see you on the other side. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about it. We have a house full of company, and I'm not totally sure how much I'm going to get to spin, but I'll get us gain done. <laughs> so I'm, I'm setting my expectations low this year, so we'll see how it goes. So I have been clearing off my bobbins. Um, one thing that I finished this past week in effort to clear off my bobbins was this little tidbits skein. It's just a bunch of bits and bobs and ends and odds off of my um, bobbins. Um, these happen to all be on my shacked bobbins, so now my shacked bobbins are actually clear, um, which is great because I do plan on spinning in double drive on my match list quite a bit. And um, yeah, so that's just a really fun skein. It was just bits and bobs and it came out really quite quite pretty actually. And uh, that was my effort to clear my bobbins. While we're talking about Spinzilla, I may as well start there for talking about um, what I wanted to sort of share with you this week. One of the really big things if you're spinning for Spinzilla to keep in mind is that because you're trying to spin as much as you can through Spinzilla, doing a lot of fiber prep throughout the week is just not realistic. You just can't get it done. Um, and I find when I first, probably the first year that I participated in Spinzilla, I just sort of, I heard people saying it, but I didn't really understand. I hadn't done the event yet. I didn't really know. And by about the third day, I was really hurting for fiber. Um, even a braid, um, you know, when it's braided up, I'll pull one out so you can see. This is a braid of, uh, 
mixed BFL from um, Elfenwool. Um, this is from Tina, based out of Berlin in Germany. She was just uh, featured on Spinner Spotlight this past Monday. So if you're interested in learning more about her stuff, head on over to the Spinner Spotlight at wellforpearls.com. Um, so when you buy fiber like this and it's in a braid, even just getting it unbraided and figuring out what you're going to do with it and actually physically going through the effort of trying to get it undone, looking at the fiber and then starting to pull it apart takes time. Um, and I find that I'll, for me, I need that time to sort of look at the braid and examine it and pull it apart and have a really good look at the fiber, have a good look at how it was dyed. Do I want to combo spin it? Like it just, the questions go on and on and on as, as you start to unbraid fiber and you think it's going to spin up really well or you think it's going to spin up a certain way and then you get into the spin and it, you're just like, well, this isn't what I thought and you end up wasting a lot of time doing fiber prep. And I find that for me personally, if I can have that contemplative time prior and I sort of have a plan and I know what I'm going to do, for me, Spinzilla goes a lot smoother. Um, I can get a lot more spun and I can spend a lot more time just enjoying spinning. So what I have been saving for Spinzilla this year is actually a fleece that was processed by um, Custom Woolen Mills in Alberta by a friend of mine. And this is my little sample skein that I'm gonna have hanging off my wheel. Although I don't think I'm gonna reference it very much because this is my default yarn. This yarn is really easy for me to make over and over and over again. I don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about how to make this yarn. These singles for me, are, I can eyeball them. I know what these particular types of singles I like for this particular yarn. After washing, this yarn ends up being about a sport weight for me. And I can just crank this yarn out and not worry about my consistency and not worry about my whether or not I'm spinning to the right grist because I can just make this yarn over and over and over again and it'll be the same. It's super consistent and it's because I've made this yarn so much and I love knitting with it because I knit it on usually a four, four millimeter needle, um, which is a US size six maybe. Somebody's yelling it at the TV right now. I have no idea. I think it might be a US size six. Um, Anyways, I find this yarn very easy to recreate and I knew that this is what I wanted to do with this fleece. So this particular roving, it's, a, it's roving. Um, it was processed by Custom Oil Mills, like I said. It is a roving. It's kind of, actually the funny thing is it's not really a roving, it's more like a bat. Um, so I'll show you what it looks like. It came like this in the bag and I bought this off of my friend who she said she just would never spin it she'd never get a chance to and she looked up for me in her um, list of all of her fibers she looked up what this was so this is a CVM California variegated mutant crossed with a meat merino from South Africa that was brought in for breeding stock to try to round out her herd and a suffolk so this is sort of a so the the u was a suffolk cvm cross and the ram was a meat merino so this is not a soft fiber um i wouldn't actually say that it's particularly toothy but it's definitely on the coarser side and it's going to make an awesome sweater um, for outerwear, like a jacket. Um, I have a, my eye on a pattern by Anne Hansen that I'm thinking this will eventually become. I have about a, roughly about a pound and a half, so it'll be more than enough to make a two-ply. And because this is quite a coarse fiber, quite a coarse yarn, uh, wool, that's the word I'm looking for is wool. Um, I'm pretty sure I, I, I really like what it looks like as a two ply and I'm going to leave it as a two ply and I'll knit my sweater in it as a two ply because the sweater that I've chosen has open work in it. It has lace. So I think the two ply would look really, really quite nice. And I plied it quite tightly. It has a twist angle of about 40 to 45 degrees. So that increased twist and tightness in the yarn will give it the durability that it needs that already, of course, wool is going to wear better anyways. Um, it's quite downy feeling. It's quite springy and soft. Um, but for me, it's next to the skin soft. But I think for some, they would find it a little bit toothy. Um, so what I've been doing 
I had it lying here on my lap and it seems to have disappeared what I've what I've been doing with this so this came off like I showed you as the bats so what I've been doing is taking the bats and this one's already been um, pulled in half and I've been further dividing it in half like that and then um, winding it into nests quite a bit longer than this the these I used for my that little test skein I have been breaking off quite long lengths of fiber and um, winding them into nests like this. So I have been getting four per bat that I've been pulling apart and making these sort of roving nests, if you will. And that is how I'm planning on spinning it throughout the week is just pulling up a nest, spin it, pull up a nest, spin it. Um, and when it's done, it's done. And I do have some other stuff that if I get this done during the week, which will be a miracle of beyond miracles, I will work on as a backup, but I'm pretty sure that this is the only thing that I'm going to get done. So I have this huge bag here of it. And actually, if you, if I'll mute the mic and then you can see what the bag looks like. And this was all shorn in 2002, so it's not a new fiber or a new, um, new bat. Um, I think Margaret said that she had had it processed in 2002. She had had somebody that was really interested in it and then they never came and got, got it. So it's actually 14 years old and that's really amazing. I mean, she stores her stuff in a waterproof, watertight, airtight room. Um, but that's pretty amazing for 12, 14 years and we've still got a beautiful uh, roving prep. So I'm excited to get that spun. And yeah, so that's that's what I'm doing for Spinzilla. So I'd love to hear what you're working on for Spinzilla and what you're prepping for Spinzilla. And for those who are starting to spin at midnight on Sunday, best of luck throughout the week and please don't hurt yourselves. It's a grueling week. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to show you was a little bit of progress on my exploration station. I showed this to you last week and I had just started it. I got a little bit of work done on it at work which is really unusual for me because I had a terrible day at work and of course I'm in the middle of a row. So I have, I'm just on the last wedge. I have, there's, I can't remember how many wedges there are, but there's a bunch of wedges before you start the part of the shawl that is more of the straight work. Um, there aren't any short rows after I finish this last wedge. So I'm on the last wedge and then I'll start the part of the shawl that's sort of more of like what I would call a traditional crescent shawl. So that is how it is knitting up. And thank you to everybody who had such kind words to say about this shawl uh, throughout this past week. That It was really, um, I was sort of on the fence about this shawl and feeling like the colors were really bright and like it was a lot of sort of variegation and a lot of movement and, and just the really kind words from everybody was uh, very heartening. And I, I want to say thank you to everybody because you've really given me a, boost of confidence to keep working on it so thank you so remember how i had shown you the beginnings of my mitered sock yarn blanket and i had told you that you wouldn't see it every show because i'd barely get any work done on it and unfortunately i'm halfway through a square right now murphy's law <coughs> but i am going to show it to you because it's already getting huge and twisted and upside down. <laughs> so this is the part part of it. This is the one side. This is more of it. Sorry for the rogue pink hanging there. That's kind of funny. And this is the other end. So I don't know how wide I'm going to make it. I have I've gotten out to this orange over here, which if some of you will rem will recognize it as August Fiber Club, this was Peach's Orange, and it was, um, like I said, it was August. I had some unspun fiber that I had carded that was left over that I hadn't used up yet. So I spun it up. If you saw on Instagram, I was spinning it, and I plied it up, and I also had a little bit of the August left that I hadn't spun up and plied yet. So that's this over here is the August Fiber Club. 
and I guess it's the end of the month so I can spoil September. September's is in here too. Where is it? And I won't show you but August is in or October is in here as well. This is this is September's fiber club right here. So that turned out really nicely. It spun up and knit up really, really nicely. I really, I really enjoyed working with that. I, I haven't worked with Perindale a ton. I've, I've done a little bit with Perindale and I've spun a lot of like one-off skeins, but I really enjoyed spinning it while we were away in August and I really enjoyed knitting with it. And it's really created a lovely square. So that was September's Fiber Club. So um, those of you who are in Fiber Club received that at the beginning of the month. Yeah, so I got a comment actually on Instagram and somebody said that um, what they really loved about the mitered square blankets was the movement of color and the rhythm of the color changes. And I thought, man, like you just really knocked it on the head. That's exactly what it is. It's this really lovely movement of the color and this rhythm. And when you knit it, when you get into the knitting, um, I'm really finding there's a... Um, just a real excitement every time you start a new square and deciding what color is going to go where and how you're going to handle the color and um, you know I wanted mine to be quite watercolory and that's not really what's ended up happening but a little bit and um, I, I I did want to show you you guys are going to laugh at me that's totally fine you know that I don't mind being laughed at a little bit I had shown you my bag of of all of my mini mini skeins and samples and stuff that I've been spinning up you know for the last number of years and this has been growing and there's more of more of these where they came from so you would think that by now this would be like decreasing in size no it's actually increased in size because I've plied up a bunch of stuff that was resting that I want to get into my blanket so I plied it and I've taken some of my samples that I was saving for other stuff away from that stuff and thrown it in here because I'm like hunting out all these samples that I want for for the blanket. So it's kind of turned me into a bit of a crazy person. <laughs> so at least I can laugh at myself about it because I'm absolutely loving this project. And I did not see that coming at all. Um, so I guess I was just needing a bit of a change and needing something different to work on. So um, to those who's... One sec. To those whose blankets, um, I had the pleasure of watching you guys knit up on your podcast over the last number of years. Um, thank you for all of your enthusiasm over the years because it's really gotten me going on mine. So that's, um, yeah, it's really cool. The last thing that I was going to talk about today was Sweet Georgie Yarns Fiber Club from September. So this is this month's Fiber Club. So for those who are in Sweet Georgie Yarns' Fiber Club um, and you don't want to see spoilers, just I'll say goodbye now. Uh, I usually, I haven't really been talking about Fiber Club on the podcast very much the last number of months. There's a few reasons for that. I sort of felt like uh, it ended up, I was sort of talking about it a lot and I was sort of getting a bit burned out on talking about the same thing every month over and over. I also guest post on the Sweet Georgie Yarns blog, which is sweetgeorgieyarns.com slash blog. And I sort of just was feeling like it was just a lot of chatter about the same hank of yarn and the same braid of fiber every month but I really wanted to show this month's fiber because it was one of the luxury blends it's actually fallen off my chair um, this was for September 2016 it was a yak silk blend and I noticed that quite a number of people on Instagram um, and on Ravelry were saying that they you know were, were finding the spin quite challenging and were really not necessarily struggling with it, but just finding it a challenge. So this is my finished yarn. And like I said, this is a 50-50 yak silk blend. And I spun this over the fold. So I spun it actually over the fold of my pointer finger from my fiber supply hand. So for me, that's my right, my right hand. And I pulled it off the top of my finger instead of from the tip. And the reason why I did that is because it keeps the, the sheen of the silk really smooth and almost sort of folds it in half and you end up with this lovely sheen and preserving the preservation of the sheen. I ended up with about 450 yards in the end and I'm really happy with how this turned out but because of the yak I did end up with some inconsistent bits where I sort of got a clump of 
yak come forward in my drafting and there really wasn't much that I could do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, um, but it was very slippery. It was, the silk really took over in the spinning process, which is very typical of these 50-50 blends. But if you're having trouble with it and you're sort of struggling with spinning it, definitely try spinning over the fold and you may be, you might not find it natural at first. It may be a bit of a challenge, but you may find that as you work through the braid, it'll become more and more natural and you're, you'll find um, that you get into a bit of a rhythm. So I hope that that helps for those who um, got this club or for those who have a 50-50 blend of silk and something in their stash. Silk is very slippery. There are no scales like on wool. Um, there's nothing for it to catch on to, so it does tend to slip quite a bit. And then uh, give it a good washing and a good, a good snap where you go like this and a good thwack. And uh, I think you'll probably be very, very happy with what you end up with. So this was the one big skein uh, that I ended up with. So in total, I got 450 yards, but this was 375. And I actually took, I'm gonna write a, um, th this is probably gonna be an upcoming workshop or it's gonna be a, um, a blog post, I'm not totally sure. Um, this was a high twist singles with a low twist ply. So the yarn itself and the plies themselves them, itself is, is quite, um, if you didn't know any better, you would almost say that it was under plied. Um, and there's a reason that I did that. And, and like I said, I'll, I will talk about that in the future, but um, I'm gonna knit up some swatches from this yarn. And then with the last 75 yards, I did a high twist ply. So same singles, same high twist singles. And then I did a much, much higher twist for the ply. I actually went up quite substantially on my ratios to get that twist in there. Cause um, lace weight yarn is hard to ply. It's hard to get a lot of twist into it for plying and it tends to take a lot of effort. And you have to sit there and treadle and treadle and treadle to add that twist. And I'm gonna knit up some swatches out of this as well and, and do a bit of a comparison exercise. So I'm not sure if that'll be a workshop or a blog post, but um, there is, I, I kind of was curious myself and haven't done an experiment like this in a while. And I thought that maybe this was a great fiber to do some experimenting with um, around lace and creating lace yarns out of blends and working with fibers that are traditionally sort of difficult to work with and playing around with the twist a little bit. So those are my two skeins of yarn that I did for, for September's Fiber Club. They were very labor intensive. It took me a long time to get through these. So I'm glad that they're done. I'm glad they're off the wheel. I'm really glad it's done before Spinzilla because I was going to have to put it aside for Spinzilla. I think that's it for today. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Here in Vancouver, we have Knit City this weekend. It's happening um, at the PM p and &E, um, in East Vancouver. For those who are going and checking it out this weekend, I will be spinning most of the weekend in the Sweet Georgie Yarns' booth. So please come by and say hello and introduce yourselves. I would love to meet you. Um, you know what I look like, so please come and say hello. And to everybody else, have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful kickoff to Spinzilla. Happy spinning, everyone. Bye.